Well hello, good morning. Welcome back to another Muscle Fishing Film. I um, hope you're doing well, I hope you had a good week. Yes, it's early. Um, it is, well, we're in the half five lock, so we're literally gonna be out for first light. Uh, as you can see, it's still pretty dark, but once that light starts kicking in, uh, yesterday it was a light about 5.45, so we're gonna bomb out there. Today we are only losing lures. We've got Sidewinder Scary's Eels, we've got some Sidewinder Slopitz Jigs, we've got some Jigging Rods, and we're literally gonna go over the reefs and just see what we can get. It's a bit of an exploratory mission. Uh, I know there's fish out there, so hopefully we can pick one or two off, but it's fishing, guys, so you don't always get what you want. But that is the aim of the game, is to use lures and try and catch some fish. Gates are opening here at Sovereign. We're just waiting for those to fully open, and uh, we'll get you out there. So for a wrecking slash deep reefing setup, um, I've got a Slopus jig rod, custom rod there, which is absolutely beautiful rod, and I might use that later on. But I was gonna use this, it's got a little bit stronger braid, and it means that I won't lose my boom generally. If I, if I get caught, I'll just use the lure. So I've got a 12 to 20. Uh, this is a Nomakura. Uh, quite, nice quite a nice little rod there, very low profile. We've got a strike reel there from Finnor. We've got, I think, 50 pound braid on there from memory. Let's try and get this one out of the clip. There we go. And then I've got a 30 pound leader just tied off with a clip there. And then to set it up, what I do is I pre make a load of these booms, which one end has a clip which goes onto your main line. In fact, it's an old clip I can take off. Don't need that one. So you've got a swivel one end, and then you've got the clip this end on the longer bit. That's where the clip goes, where you're going to clip on your lure. So we'll attach the boom on. Now, it's a medium tide today, so I'm actually going to go around with an eight ounce. I might be able to get, get away with a six, but I'd rather, I'd rather have uh, a bit, bit of weight on there. Just get it direct down so I'm jigging and then staying in contact with my lure. So that clips onto there with your boom, like that. All made up, pre, all pre-made up. And then we've got a weight somewhere. We've got a weight there. That goes onto that clip. So now you've got a weight like this. And you've got this end where your lure goes onto. And what I do is I pre-make all of my traces up. I've normally got them in a rig wallet. It's just an extra one that I made. You can make 
these traces as long or as short as you like but generally speaking they're going to be between six to ten foot some people like 12 foot uh, i just find it a little bit of a handful when you're bringing it in um, although saying that when you increase the tra trace length you can increase your catch rate so it's all swings and roundabouts right so one end of my trace is a little loop triple overhand loop that just slides on to this little clip here like so so it's like that and then we're ready to rock and roll because also the other end we've got a four inch candy king scary zeal pop that over the side so that's across there we're just gonna release it to the bottom on the bottom just engage your strike mode and just a constant retrieve 15 20 turns drop back down do the same and we'll see if we can pick up a fish or two and this is the exact same method you can use on wrecks wrecks and deep reefs we'll get back to you when we find some fish and we're getting into a bit of a roll You'll see me constantly looking back at the, the, the sonar back there. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the ground, so I'm looking at the peaks and the dips so I can alter where my lure sits. Because a massive rise, you want to get your lure up, otherwise you're going to get snagged. So yeah, it's a bit of a... Um, have got to look at two things at once, really. You've got to obviously be concentrating on your fishing. And also, just checking that sonar every sort of 15 seconds just to see what the bottom's like. See if you've got any peaks or anything that you might want to target. We're starting to get a lot more may rot in the water now. I can already see it. Um, well, there'll be fish here today, uh, def definitely. We all, I'm sure we'll get some, but um, yeah, definitely a little bit, a little bit more may rot than there was last time I was out. Right, so this ground we're over actually isn't overly rough. It's broken up ground, but it's not rough, rough ground. So that means I'm going to try one of these, which is a sidewinder jig, uh, slow pitch jig, one of these. And uh, yeah, we'll just see if we can pick something up on the bottom. If I jig this on the bottom, I might be able to pick up a rat or two, but I might not. We shall see. But yeah, let's give this a go. So Neil's on the same setup as I was. If I'm on this, then what we're doing is we're, as there's two of us, we might as well both be doing different options, seeing what works. I should really put a lure clip on this, but that'll do. Stick it in the top eye and we'll go down. Here we go guys, we've got a fish on the slow pitch jig. We've got a fish on the slow pitch jig guys, it's a nice fish. So keep the pressure on, that rod, look at that beautiful rod guys. Oh, -hoo -hoo. yeah, yeah definitely near the way over this one mate. Whoa, yes. You're all right with that. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm fine mate, I'll net it, don't you worry. Let the rod do the work. Lovely soft rod, these slow pitch jig rods. Woo! I reckon this could be a bass or a big cod. Just on the slow pitch jig, different method, guys. Different method. Just coming out the back of the boat, so it makes me think bass. Oh, yes! Oh my goodness, me, Neil! Oh my god, it's a massive cod! Well done, matey. Well done. Yes! Well done. Well done. <laughs> Get in! I said a cod. That's a big one as well. well <laughs> Look at that, man. Well done, mate. Oh, well on the sidewinder slow pitch jig. I was just jigging it off the bottom. I said this bottom isn't like this. Perfect for a slow pitch jigging. That is a very decent cod. Yeah, well done. That is a lovely fish. That's the best one I've seen for a couple of years. That, that is probably near matching my PB, guys. Absolutely nailed on that slow pitch jig. I'll get a photo of that in a minute. Get a nice photo, but beautiful fish. Lovely that is the sign of spring. Yeah, lovely specimen. We get a there. we get a lovely spring run of, of cod. Um, and they're they're here now, so I said early bird catches the worm, guys. And uh fell to a side minor slow pitch jig. <laughs> Excellent fun on that uh, that rod as well. Get in. Wow, what a cracking fish that was. Beautiful, beautiful cod. 
with a slow pitch jig. I changed the method because I thought the ground we were on, it was just ideal for it. And all I'm doing is I'm flicking a lure off the bottom. The reason I'm doing that is because cods sit on the bottom, generally speaking. Um, they don't really, um, they're not really mid-column fish. They, they like to sit hard on the bottom, they eat the crabs and they eat all the little bits on the bottom. And uh, yeah, the sidewinder set up with a scary zeal and boom is great, but obviously you're, a lot of the time you're not on the bottom, you're winding it out. Obviously you can flick it off the bottom as well, but yeah, I thought we'd put on a slow pitch jig. Enable, enable us to have more time on the bottom, maybe pick up a wrasse or something. But we picked up that beautiful cod. I'll have to look back at the video, but I'm pretty sure I might have mentioned it might have been a cod. Just, just because I could feel the head shaking and it was big, vicious head knocks. And a beautiful thing with a slow pitch jig like that and the big assist hooks, when they're hooks, they're not coming off. Not easily anyway. So I was just doing quite little, just short, just short little pitch jigs. Just like that, little short little things. Let it fall back in the water, hit in the bottom, little flick up, that's all I'm doing. You'll see me um, every so often today, I'll be swapping my hand around with a slow pitch jig. Sometimes I'll have it in my right arm, sometimes I'll be having it in my left arm. And the reason is, I'm ambidextrous. Uh, I write with my right, but I do a lot of other things with my left. So, if you're right-handed, you should be holding it in your left, so you can wheel in with your right on a, on a jigging rod. But, for me, it almost feels more comfortable to jig on the right, and then when I've got a fish on, <laughs> play it on that side. It's all very strange. Because if I'm wrecking with a, with a rod and I'm just winding, I have it in my right hand. But if I'm jigging, it feels more natural to have it in my right arm. But, yeah, that's just because I'm married dexterous and uh, I do things weirdly. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Fish, fish on, fish on, fish on. <laughs> fish on! Neil said there's something on the sonar. I looked over and bam, straight away. Neil, that was, a, that was incredible. You said, Neil said, look at that bit of ground behind camera. You'd have been able to hear him. He called my name. And bam, into a fish instantly. Into a fish instantly. Just little flicks off the bottom. Yeah, I'm letting that lovely custom built rod do all the work going out from the boat, so I'd imagine it's a cod. It's had a big, big head shake. It has had some big, put it on the bottom at first. That tape was savage. Oh my goodness, Neil, it's a big one. <laughs> that did not fight like a pollock. That's near double figure pollock. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll get her out the water and I'll show you. Oh. Yeah, on me, on yes, me. yes, Neil. Yes, Neil. Oh no! Did he come off? Did he come off? Oh no! no. Yeah. Up, boy. <laughs> he was going. He was. Well, guys. <laughs> Neil just lost a lovely pollock as well. Uh, took a massive diving run, but there's mine. That's a beautiful fish. I wouldn't say it's a double. I think that's probably seven or eight pounds. Well, that might weigh a little bit later on, but there we go. Look, taking on a slow pitch jig again, right on the bottom, little flips. We were not, we're not even that far out, to be honest, today. Uh, no need to go offshore this time of year when the fish migrate in. I just sent Neil earlier. All this bad weather, we've had four or five months of really bad wind, a lot of rain, storms, constant storms, 50 mile an hour winds. It's gonna have done the fish a load of good. Not great for us anglers and our mental health because we can't get out fishing, but very good to give the fish a rest and for them to repopulate. And look, we're out here, middle of April, catching beautiful fish. Excellent. Right, so we're on our third drift now. Um, I'm gonna stick on this slow pitch jig because I might as well. I've caught two very nice fish already. Nice cod, nice pollock. Neil lost a big pollock. I saw his rod going and the line being stripped off. Um, hopefully, we'll get him back on this run. Well, today, guys, was always gonna be an inshore day. Um, 
you know, we weren't going to go bombing off offshore because you don't need to at this time of year. The idea was to come out and just use lures, and that's what we're doing. Um, we might not even go to a wreck today. If it goes very quiet here, we, we might try one. Um, but there's cod here, there's pollock here, there'll be bass on here as well. There'll be wrasse, there'll be lots of different species we can try and catch. I'm going to stick with the slow pitch jig today, so my arm's going to be killing me by the end of the end of today's shift, but that's fine. I say I'll stick with it. Um, I, I might, I still might go to my, my usual shadow boom setup, but what a morning. And the weather windows day is quite small. We've only really got half a day of, of nice weather, really, to um, to use. So yeah. We're just going to see what we can do. They're either big fish or that's it. No like big little cats, is there? Oh, fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! There we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, hello. Another fish on guys, just a little flicking on the bottom. I don't think it's quite as big this one, but we'll see. Here we go. Slowly bringing them up. I don't think it's going to be as big. It could even be a small wrasse or a big pouting, but no, no, it's a decent fish. It's another decent pollock. It's another decent pollock. I just take the joke. Did you? Yeah, they're here, mate. They're here. Hey, there we go. There we go. <laughs> well. That's uh, another drift, another fish. Marking, mate, fish marking. There you go, guys, just a little juvenile pollock. That one will pop, probably pop that one back. It's only a little small one. But um, yeah, taking on a slope, it's jig again. I thought it was a bit smaller, it didn't go for cracking dive, but there's, there's fish on the screen now. They're all in the same, they're all in the same spot. Take on a slope, it's jig. Oh, look at that, it's dropped right down. Look at that. Massive drop, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I reckon that's where they are. Around that bit. Around there somewhere. Oh, fish on! Or is it the bottom? No, bottom. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that's going to come off. Yeah, lost the old lot. Oh well. Get that one tied. You'll see guys, I'm using a, a different rod and reel. Um, it's, it's literally just because I snapped off on the other one. Um, and that reel, on, that blue reel I use, has got quite a light braid, it's a very thin braid. I think it's only about 30 pound. It might even be 20 pound. It's really light. So any snag you get caught in, you lose your gear. And on a boom and wrecking setup, you lose it every time and it's quite annoying. Um, whereas this rod and reel, this reel particularly, not the rod, the, just the reel, uh, it's got a stronger braid on it, about 50, 60 pound braid. And it means that I can pull the lure out of the wreck or the reef and just lose the lure and get my weight and boom back. So I'm just, this one was set up, so still slope it's jigging, but with a different rod. And that's the 12 to 20 pound one. Feels weird going onto a rod like this when you've, when you've gone from a really beautiful custom slow pitch light jigging rod. To, uh, this is still a lovely rod, but the difference is still insane. Totally, totally different. diving run so it might be a, a rat possibly let's have a look no it's not too that's a pollock yes neil's on as well on. right i'm gonna try and get this in it's not a bad one it's not a bad one yes there we go yes get it they're still here neil's in behind me so i'm gonna grab the net in case it's a nice one Different colour lure this one, on 160 gram that one. Beautiful. And that's, uh, that's Neil's little tiddler there, which we'll put back. Now she goes, excellent. So that take I just had on that pollock, 
um, what, it, what it had done, it picked up the lure and it swam up in the water. So when I went to pull the rod up, there was no, there was no tech there. I thought, where's the weight gone? I thought, ah, oh, it's a fish on. Wine, 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 we're in. But obviously, as you're picking it up, the fish is way up. So you're still, if you're, you're loose. And that can happen on the slope of jigs. So just bear in mind, if you if you drop it and then you go to pick pick up the rod again, and there's no weight there, you've not lost your lure. What's happened is the fish has generally taken it and picked it up and swam up in the water column. And then you've got to wind hard and set those hooks. Right, so we've come to a wreck now. The area where we're fishing, we're getting a little bit quiet. We're just setting up the drift. So the first drift you do on a wreck is, is, is never normally perfect because you're working out the wind and the tide and seeing where you drift. And then on the second drift, you alter that and you correct it. So what we're doing is we're just doing our first, our first little go over it just to see what we can do. Oh, there was a little peck there already. So I'm going back to me um, scary zeal and boom setup, the one I showed you at the very beginning with that plastic straw type thing. That's the, that's the method we're using on here for now. So we're in a bit deeper water. Um, the the sloper jig's very good over slack water on wrecks, and they are very good over top where you've got to be tide as well, but just rather use this setup on, on a wreck, really. That's my personal preference, that's all. So on a wreck um, and, on, and on this setup, it's more of a constant wind. Um, just using one of Neil's rods. We've just got to work out the speed of the reel. But the wreck's coming up now, so we're going to drop to the bottom and we're going to hopefully go over the top of it. It is quite a saggy wreck, this one, but it is a very big one. Tell me now, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. There will be fish on here. I'm quite confident if we stick out here, we'll, we will get some nice pollock on this wreck. Because they are, they are on the inshore wrecks now. So I can see it on the sonar, it's peaking up now. It's done a nice run on this. All right, so first wreck pollock, that's only on the second drift. Um, just a little, little juvenile baby pollock, that one. Sorry I didn't get that one on camera. Um, I put the camera on, but the battery was low, hence why it cut out. So I didn't get any of that on camera, but it was just a steady wind. Um, and it was caught on a, it was caught on a six inch, little scary zeal. Candy King. So there we go. Get that little one back and uh, try and get a bigger one. But there's a few fish on here, so we'll we'll keep at it. All right, so we'll pop that uh, pop that lure back down. I said sorry, I didn't get that one on camera. Uh, the, the battery ran out. I should have changed it earlier, but you know what it's like. You arrive at a wreck, you've got a, a, a fish, you've got a, a chance to get your lure down and going. You do, and the camera sort of for me comes second a bit of the time. I'm just going to wind that in and start again because what I've done is I've. I've dropped the rod as the boat's still slowing down. That is another tip I can give you. When you're wreck fishing or you're setting up a drift, before you put your rod down, just give the boat a chance to slow down and actually stop. Um, otherwise, you put your lure down and it ends up, it ends up way out. So now we should be directly below us. Yeah, already that's going better. Just put the lure down a bit quickly, that's all. So that wreck's approaching us in about, 30 foot, so it gives us a chance to get down and start winding up over the top of it. So it's mid late pull at the moment, and as I said, the, in, the inshore wrecks are starting to get populated, but there isn't any, well, there will be some big fish on there, but they're not. Oh, there's a tap there. Oh, there was a tap. There was a tap. I sort of pulled at it. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, there we go. We're in. We're in. Yeah, better fish. Better fish. Better fish. Much better. I'm gonna keep winding guys, keep the tension on. Yeah, much, much better fish. This could be a double. This could be a double. Whoa, oh, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Letting the rod do the work, letting the rod do the work. He's taking line, he's taking line, he's taking line. Oh, I've already got him off a little bit, so I'm gonna let, allow him to come up a bit. This is gonna be a donkey of a pollock, guys. He kept pecking at it and I kept taking him up. Now we bit that quite far up. This is gonna be a big one now. You might want to get that net yeah, ready. This is your dinner for the next week. This is a big one, Neil. Oh my goodness, Neil! Oh my goodness, Neil! That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. 
Yes! In there. That's a double. <laughs> that is a double. Lovely. Look at that fish. Neil, what a day we're having, mate. <laughs> I'll get a nice pair of that one. Put it in. <laughs> Put it in. <laughs> yes, Neil. Yes, man. Oh, that's a lovely one. What a fish, guys. Nice. What a fish. That's a beauty. They're the sort of ones that. If you lose that, you get very, very upset. Yeah. That is a double, that's a double figure. That's about 10 pound. Caught on a six inch candy thing. We're gonna get a lovely photo of that and we're gonna get back round and go and get another, go and get another one or two. Fabulous, look at that. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful Pollock. I was just saying the inshore wrecks won't have massive fish on them in their numbers, but second, second run, second fish. Fabulous. Well, what a cracking fish, guys. That's a lovely, lovely fish. So we're just doing another run now. Um, so I'm going straight back down very quickly because we've done it a little bit short, that one. Right, let's try and get another one. As I said, it kept tapping it and I said I yanked it in. I shouldn't have done that, but I carried on re retrieving it at the same speed. And guess what? That big pollock went... I'm still going to have that. Tap on. Yep, fish on, fish on, fish on, fish on. Another nice fish, guys. Another nice fish. Whoa! He's taking line. He's taking line. He's taking line. Oh! No! 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 Naughty boy! Naughty boy! Naughty! Hey! Right, come off! Departed. You departed on the wreck, I think, guys. There. You've taken line. You've taken too much line. Not much I can do about that one. Oh! He snapped me off. Look at that. He snapped me off in the wreck. Well, I'm not gutted that I lost that big one. It was another another double size figure pollock I lost there. We departed on the wreck. Um, because I'd, I've already caught some lovely fish today, so um, I'm not too gutted, but should really have upped the gear a little bit there. I'm on a 30 pound class rod here. I probably could have probably could have given it a little bit more bully than got it out of the wreck, because it was taking line, taking line, taking line. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it weren't stopping for no one. So we've probably done this drift a little bit short, to be honest, we probably should have come over a little bit more. We might clip the back end though, so we'll keep going, because I think there's just a big show over it at the moment and they're willing to feed and they're willing to chase. Coming in now. I think, yeah, on that next one, mate, we have to really come over a bit. Because, yeah, yeah, I can see it now, yeah. <coughs> see that wreck coming in on the sonar now. Bite, oh, there was a bite there. Bite there again, bite there again. Yeah, we're on, fish on. Fish on, fish on, fish on. Not huge, I don't think, this one but it's fish all the same. It's quite high up that one, Neil. Do you not have any pecs? No. Weird. Nothing. Very odd. Fought me all the way up this one, so I wouldn't be surprised if it might be a bass this on this occasion. And he's going away from the boat, so we'll see what he is. But if he's, if he's a bass, I wouldn't be surprised. Bass, Neil. Bass, I think. Uh, bass! Nice one, nice bass. I called that, didn't I, guys? I said a bass. You concentrate, Neil, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yes! Got him. Yeah, got him. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep down there, Neil, because we're just, that back end might have, might have a few. I'll give you a white lure in a minute if you want. There we go, I said it might be bass. It fought me all the way up and it, the line was going away from the boat, which usually indicates bass. There we go. Lovely little bass, first one of the season for me. Oh, look at that. Lovely, there was a big shoal down there as well. I saw that shoal and uh, clearly, there we go. Beautiful, taking on a little candy cane there at the top. Kept pecking, kept pecking, I carried on winding. Boom, we hooked one. Get a nice photo and uh, go back around and catch another. On that one. Yeah. So the wreck we were on, it was approaching slack water and a big dive boat's come up, big commercial dive boat. Um, very friendly, he's come up and asked nicely um, if he can um, if he can dive it. And um, we said, yeah, no, that's fine, no problem. So uh, what we're gonna do now, we've had a few fish off it anyway, and the last three or four runs was a little bit quiet. We could go to some other wrecks, but I think uh, today we, we, we haven't got the kit with us to really go wrecking. Normally we've got um, a different chart plotter and I bring my uh, battery charger to put on my Navionics uh, release shading. And obviously I've only got my phone and I don't want to burn my battery out. So 
we're gonna go and uh, put ourselves on some reef again and uh, yeah we'll play around with some slow pitch jigs and, uh, and some sidewinder scary eels and do the same thing we were doing this morning but to be honest we've had a cracking day already we had some lovely fish so um it's not even 10 o'clock so even if we went in midday we had a good day but yeah we're just gonna go and have a little go on uh, on some of the um the reefs a bit more inshore so oh, so we're just at slack water at the moment neil's very kindly filleting the fish and look at that it's a little i think that might be a herring um i don't think it's a pouting it's got two big eyes for a pouting could be a little pouting but yeah i don't know it's very silvery one side so i don't i don't think that's a pouting at all i think that's that's possibly a little herring or a sprat but look at the size of that bait that's about well it's a good four and a half inches i suppose um so it just shows a little six inch sidewinder nothing for a big pollock to take that's what that's what they're feeding on fish like that so yeah little little fish there that, that was his dinner yeah we're just waiting for the tide to kick, kick in and then we're going to do a little bit more concentrated fishing when the tide's like this it's um it's not um it's not great really you know the fishing does go a bit quiet um slack water you can try and find yourself areas which usually fast really which flows really fast so if you've got a real big deep reef which usually you've got massive tidal streams over when the current's going and the tide's going they're usually quite good slack water because you still get a bit of movement um, and the fish there they, they, they don't mind slack water generally speaking because they're used to having to fight the fierce current and when it slows down suddenly they can switch on so um there's a few uh reefs out of eastbourne uh, the elfix for example the horse both very fast reefs on a, on a on a flowing tide and ones you don't really fish on a flowing tide you want to be fishing them about an hour and a half either side of slack water um so you've got a bit of tide but you've not got that prime tide because it races through there so that's quite a good place to try on slack water but that's not where we're at we're sticking back out a little bit we're just waiting for that tide to kick in probably got about over half an hour i suppose 40 minutes of doing not a lot uh, and we'll see if we can pick up a couple of bonus fish but yeah we've had a very good day so far so stick with us and we'll see um we'll see what we can do when uh, when this tide changes right concentrate on that one oh we nearly lost the rod guys this i was just the best um... one of the day <laughs> this is a 30 pound rod <laughs> i was showing uh, neil my slow pitch jig rod and uh look it's yeah, a pollock 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 he weren't there we go, mate. Well <laughs> Little pollock. This this lure was not being worked. It was just in the water column doing that. It just shows. There you go. Little pollock on. It. Yeah, I was just chatting, showing him his slope its jig rod, and um, and his rod was going out. I went, Neil, your rod's going to go in. <laughs> pollock on, lovely. He's he annihilated that, hasn't he? Yeah. Absolutely annihilated it. That is a little sprat. I've just picked it out of his mouth. But the lure that I gave Neil to try was a four-inch pearl. I said inshore, I quite like using the small ones. And that, look, match the hatch that does. That's a four inch pearl lure. And that little sprat is exactly what's come out of that one's mouth. <laughs> so there we go. We're matching the hatch and catching fish. Right, well, that is us. Um, the inshore reefs today, uh, this morning, we weren't, well, we were inshore, but we were a little bit further off than we have been in the last few hours. That produced fish this morning. The wreck produced fish then as soon as we had to move off as soon as that tide slackened off uh, and we got a flood tide the fish just nip, stopped feeding um, we've tried different methods we've tried different areas and what i have noticed is all the boats in the local area are all moving around none of them are staying in the same spot so they're all trying to find fish when you've got a lot of boats constantly moving it's never a good sign <laughs> if you've got boats in the same area and they're, and they're, and they're constantly going around and around and around you know there's, there's fish to be had but yeah today all these boats have just got been going spread out everywhere everyone's trying to find fish in shore clearly it's been quite difficult um late morning and early afternoon so we're going to go and get the uh the half one lock um give us a little bit more time to clean the boat down get me home a little bit earlier and uh 
prepare for work. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope that there's been some tips in there for you. Hope you've picked up some stuff. Obviously, if you've got any questions, uh, please let us know. And I will, um, of course, try and help you out with the answer. Um, today, it's been Sidewinder lures all day. That's all I've used. That's all Neil's used. So the four inch ones, the six inch ones, and the slow pitch jigs. Lost three of them, bought out five. So uh, yeah, a little bit heartbreaking on all of those losses, but you've got to be in it to win it, haven't you? Have a great week, take care, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers.